Coming up, the Brooklyn Nets have their eyes set on the newly minted NBA in-season tournament. We break down the brackets, the prize pools, and why this actually could be a great opportunity for a young Brooklyn Nets roster to showcase what they're capable of. We dive in. Coming up next. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets. Every single day over there, you're going to find Doug Norrie. He's the owner-operator of DFSR. For all your daily fantasy sports rankings from DraftKings to FanDuel, he's got you covered. I'm Adam Arbrick, breaking down the New York football giants on the One Giant Podcast and your New Jersey Devils on the Devils Puck Luck Podcast. We thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are 100% free on all those great platforms. And Doug... I am excited to sink my teeth in on this new in-season NBA tournament. I think that it's exciting. I think it's specifically exciting for the Brooklyn Nets. We're going to get into all the details of it. But are you on the same page that that basketball that has more meaning to whatever degree is better for basketball? Every time, every time, even if like the even if the stakes have to be contrived a little bit or have to be a little bit more monetary for the players who for sure some is going to mean a lot more than for others. But by the way, with this new CBA, this money is going to mean a lot for a lot more guys like the we can talk about that. Like there's a there's uh, there's no there's an increasingly smaller middle class in the NBA. So like these and and you know, the lower class of NBA players, which is still, you know, very wealthy are, are going to just probably want to be incentivized to play for this money even more. But for, like you said, at the beginning with it, anything that adds some gravity to basketball during the season is worth a try at minimum. And mm-hmm. I think that the CBA it, with, in terms of the, you know, games played clause for some of these awards, plus this in-season tournament, which is basically it's the same amount of games, right? So like, it's just basketball is basketball, adding anything to it, for sure, I think is worth a try. And I'm excited to see how it plays out. And I hope that over time it gains traction to the point where fans can really sink their teeth into it. And the players are too. I think you're, I think it's going to be more well received than some people maybe thought when the negative Nancy's always coming and say, Oh, something changed. And now I'm mad about it. Right. <laughs> like, I think it's going to be, I, I'm excited for it. I think actually it lines up really well for the nets too. Yeah, and I have uh, some. I had some conversations with guys on the Locked On Network that I want to get into a little bit later around when do you start to prescribe value to something new, right? Inevitably, it takes some amount of time, but why wait? Why not get excited about this thing in its very first year? So just when we lay out what the tournament is, obviously, so everyone has a sense of it, if you hadn't looked it up, if you hadn't seen it. They broke it down in Western and Eastern conferences, three brackets of five teams apiece. The Brooklyn Nets line up actually quite favorably, potentially, with the Boston Celtics. That's not the favorable part. But the Toronto Raptors, the Chicago Bulls, and also the Orlando Magic. Everybody's going to play in group stage four games. And then out of that, you're going to get six, the three winners from each conference group, plus two wildcard teams based on all the standard stuff. Wins, point differential, key statistical categories. They go on into single elimination, and it all culminates with the semifinals and finals down in Vegas. Uh, This goes on through the month of November, essentially starting November 3rd and running through November 28th and then beyond. That's that's the nuts and bolts of it. And then there's the prize money stuff, which I think you have you have those numbers in front of you. because I know it's five hundred thousand for winners of the tournament. And then I think if you back it out, it's two fifty for the runners up in the semifinals and then down to fifty thousand coming out of the group stage, I think. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you got it. It, it, It's five hundred, two hundred, a hundred and a fifty. Uh, okay, those yeah. are the, that's the way, those are the way it breaks down. So, um, you know, five hundred thousand for the team players on the winning team is is immater- is material, right? Like that's yes. material for anybody. I don't care how rich you are. That's a that's a significant sum. And for a lot of these guys that are on these rosters, again, the way that these new this new CBA is lining up, there's just going to be more guys that this money will mean a lot more to. So I think that's worth it, and then I think that will keep a lot of these players incentivized. And I think that. I have a feeling that the league is going to get a memo this year, probably quietly and say, Hey, best foot forward in these games. <laughs> like oh, this right. is not, these aren't rest games. Even if you wanted to, if you're planning out rest, if you're planning out scheduled rest, or if you're planning on just like trying to manage players, the team, do it in the other games. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't do it in these. And I think uh, that's not been reported, but it would be insane to not have it done that way. I think that the league is going to be like, 
all hands on deck for these games because they're going to be told, hey, like we're trying to make this matter. It's worth it for you and revenue-wise to have this matter. So, and this is the first season. And the worst possible scenario is like, I'm just picking a team that's like could win it. Like for like Phoenix, it's like, hey, that's a KD and Booker rest day. It's like, no, 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 right. no. You're not doing that. You're not doing that. Right. So um, I think I think you're gonna see, at least for these playing, you're gonna see these these ones have as short of a major injury, you're gonna see these guys playing. And that's it's really interesting to think about that too, because of when it runs around in November, because then you're gonna get towards the all-star break and the Christmas Day games, and you can think about when the teams are going to try to find pockets to potentially rest guys. So you heighten the games they're going to play. And now this maybe makes it more difficult for a team like the Brooklyn Nets to look at this as being a prime opportunity to go win it because, and maybe to your point about the prize pools, if you're a Kevin Durant, if you're a Booker, if you're a Luca, if you're a Kyrie, if you're a LeBron James, there's, there's a part of this where it's like, I can help lead my team and yeah. effectively lead the lower level guys on my roster. No, no disparaging remarks. Right. But like I can lead you guys to half a million dollars, right? Like I, <laughs> I can yeah. find more money for you by being as good as I possibly can be. So from a um, perception persona, right? Like from, from a, a message to the NBA and to your own team, Kevin Durant, I helped win all the rookies, $500,000 this yes. year. Like that's actually probably a nice feather in the cap for all the superstar guys. Whereas we say the money is real. It matters. But on that highest possible level, it's probably actually the recognition inside the locker room that carries it a long way. A hundred percent. I think that's been like sort of undersold along the way here. I think people, cause they oftentimes folks want to, uh, we'll get into the nets here in a second. Cause I, again, yeah. I just, as a reminder, I think do things do really line up pretty well for the nets to have this be, you know, somewhat maybe exciting um, for this team. But I think that that has been undersold because oftentimes when people say like, Oh, they don't need the money. Okay. Well, everyone likes money. This is why these guys hold out for the last possible dollar every time, even right. when the numbers are more than most people could imagine. It's like, Hey, guess what? It's like a lot about the money and, and, and numbers that are well beyond anything that most people can even just begin to think about as tangible. But again, like, so already these guys prove like every time they want the most of the contracts, but yes, what you just said there, I think is really important too. the, the, um, not, like knight and shining armor aspect to it among mm -hmm. the superstars with the rest of the guys on the team. If you can do it around a group that we already know is really competitive. And now you stick like your teammates, Plus, like just you know the the award, and maybe the award means not that much. That's, uh, that's fine, but I think that other part will matter way more than most people are talking about. And I bet you, and I the thing, I, what you just said, by the way, I think we'll hear lots of quotes from that at the end. Like yeah. that thing that you just said among those superstar guys talking about some of the other teammates getting everyone paid, having fun, doing that stuff. I bet you, you're right. I, I bet you we'll hear that as a end of tournament quote. Takes, from a couple of these guys takes four or five, six games in the regular season and heightens them, right? Makes it a little bit more. I even think back to in the off season, we see the Brooklyn Nets do the practice in the park in Brooklyn. That is a practice. It's a little scrimmage, but it takes on a new fanfare. It takes on a new level of excitement. Yeah. And even the players talk about that differently. Anytime you can prescribe a different type of atmosphere to something, I think you're going to elevate it for everybody coming up here in a second a note around the potential winning pool here and what do it mean for a lot of young players on the Brooklyn Nets specifically and how they stack up inside the Eastern Conference bracket. All right, before we get to that, I'll tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Football season's about to kick off. It's kind of kicked off already in the preseason here. FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. You've been he hearing us talk about this. This deal is almost too good to be true. It's right now, you can bet on a Super Bowl winner. So you're looking end of the season on FanDuel, but when you do that, you're going to get bonus bets every time that team wins during the regular season. Okay, let me read this to you again because you're, you're saying to yourself, wait a second, I can bet on a team to win the Super Bowl and then root for the team all season long? Definitely. That is what's happening over on FanDuel. You're going to get that back in bonus bets every time the team wins. Uh, it's just really, really easy. You can bet, use those bonus bets for the over-under, the spread. You can go up there and the player props, which FanDuel has more player props than you could really ever imagine if you spent a whole day trying to think about it. So much more every sport. You get into some early season basketball stuff over on FanDuel as well. It's all there for you. You have to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to start earning those bonus bets with the Super Bowl winner. It's America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, so talking about the new NBA in-season tournament, which the Brooklyn Nets obviously are one of the teams potentially that could try to make a little bit of noise for themselves inside of it. And I think there's there's a number of different reasons why it matters for them beyond how far they go in it and just the potential. But 
One final note on the money, because we talk about the winners getting $500,000. When you look across the roster and you think about where the cap hit stands, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys all the way up to rookie Noah Clowney, who we may not see at the NBA level that much this season. This would effectively be 20, 25 percent of a salary boost for them and bump this season. Like that is a significant number for the back end of the roster. And obviously Cameron Johnson, Mikhail Bridges, these guys don't fall into that same category. But frankly, I mean, even Nicholas Claxton, who is still only making under $10 million coming into the season, we know the big payday is coming for him, but it matters for him as well. So the Nets have a lot of guys and in the NBA, every team in the league has players like this. But when we look at the way the brackets broke down here, Doug, we yeah. said in the Eastern Conference, I mentioned that it's Boston, Toronto, Chicago, and Orlando. And just to give you the other two brackets, which already tells you why this probably broke down pretty favorably for Brooklyn, it's Milwaukee, the Knicks, Miami, the Wizards, and, and Charlotte. Okay, maybe those last two are, are light. But then the 76ers, Cleveland, Atlanta, the Pacers, and Detroit. This, this group right here that the Nets are in is the mm -hmm. only group that doesn't have two high-level, top-tier playoff teams in the Eastern yep. Conference, right? Boston is there. And then it's a bunch of others, basically. And the Nets actually could arguably be the top of the others. Yeah, look, it, it, you're exactly right by breaking it down that way. If you look at all, ever, even going into the West, too, it's like, if you go look at the East, it's Sixers, Cleveland, right there, right? And they yep. get the Hawks thrown into. Bucks, Knicks, okay, and the Heat in Group B. So, uh, with these other groups, like with the Celtics are the clear favorite. Celtics are the favorite to win the in-season tournament. And frankly, on FanDuel, the, uh, the favorite to win the championship this year, uh, slightly ahead on of Denver, which I always find head-scratching because I'm like, Denver just did it in the same thing, basically. Did it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but after that, like the other four teams in here, Nets, Raptors, Bulls, Magic, are all teams that are likely going to be – either in the lottery or like fighting for the last edge of the playing game. Right. So mm -hmm. just from that perspective of trying to like get, you know, maybe you steal a game here, if that's the way it's going to be, like if you can steal one against Boston, I mean, all the other games theoretically should be winnable for this team, right. With, with, with the nets are, are shaping up. So mm -hmm. overall in season odds, like they're like, uh, you know, 11, or 20 20th overall right now in FanDuel to win the season, in season tournament. It's not all that likely. Although I will say the odds are much closer in the in season thing than let's say the championship, because mm -hmm. one, there's fewer games. These are one offs. It's more tournament style Def, it's, You know, if you're thinking about like sort of why the NCAA tournament is fun, it's not, this is an elimination, but the games mean a ton. Like, cause, because there's only four teams per bracket in the in the beginning of the playing part of it like those games are really really high leverage actually and you can steal a game right, right. like we've seen this before that's you know seven game series are incredibly difficult to win over that because everyone regresses to their own good or bad mean but in terms of like being able to steal a game like this there's a lot of ways for this to break right for the nets um and, and i think that that's why you see these you see these uh odds just like a little bit closer because they, I think there's an understanding that you could steal some stuff in here, right? And, and the, it's going to be hard to get all the way there, but it's like it's not going to be maybe hard to get out of your bracket, though. Yeah, and by the way, so you because you mentioned the West there, but just that's the Grizzly. You have um, you have Memphis yeah. with Phoenix with LA in the same bracket, along with the Jazz and the Portland Trailblazers. Maybe they're the you know back end layers there, but Jazz were certainly surprising last season. The Nuggets are there with the Clippers and the Dallas Mavericks because it broke down about how many wins you had the last year and where you finished. So in some things in the West, it got wonky because of the fact that Dallas actually missed the playoffs last season, and then you get. Uh, the Kings and the Golden State Warriors, along with the Timberwolves, OKC, and the Spurs. So you have some like the low-end back-end teams that's going to happen. But to your point, the Nets seem to have that most favorable setup here. The, the question I get, uh, not even a question, I think if you look at it, the Nets coming out as one of, as the wild card team, right? You have two wild card teams coming out of this. The nice thing, I guess, potentially about it is why this breaks well for them is that, okay, say the 76ers take it, or well, the 76ers are in kind of a weird spot now. Let's say Cleveland takes the East A group as their A, B, and C. If Cleveland takes the East, well, okay, is, is Philadelphia automatically going to be that wild card? Either they're going to get bumped out or Miami gets bumped out from Group B or Milwaukee gets bumped out from Group B. Some other quality team is going to get knocked down here where after the group stage with the two wild cards, again, the Nets could find themselves maybe actually being the third best remaining team in terms of a chance to win it in spite of being a wild card. How I see them making it out of the group stage. I see them being a wild card. How likely do you think it is they make it through the next round when it comes to single elimination? 
Well, that's where it's going to get tough, right? Obviously, because it's those are almost all all going to be good teams at that point, right? Like, there's just almost no way around that because the way it breaks down is the Nets avoid all, all, most of the good teams in the first part of it, but don't avoid the. It, it, at that point, it'd be impossible to avoid the teams going right. on. So, I think like their chances of actually getting in here as a wild card team because of the way the group stage is set up is good, right? Like, it should be like they should be definitely in the mix here yeah after that like it's pretty unlikely again though i almost for sure what we're gonna see here in this is upsets because because yeah. again you look to compare it to the end stage tournament in this way in that like single elimination when you get to this point specifically we see it all the time one upsets happen all the time because in one 48 minute stretch a bad team can beat a better team <laughs> like mm-hmm. you can run hot from three like there's just a lot of you know foul trouble the other team just has an injury, like a legit injury. Like there's lots of ways that this can work out for the lower team in it. I think for sure we will see maybe not this year, but there will be a year of like a Cinderella run through this for sure. And as the stakes kind of get higher, you're just going to see it happen. Like it'll, how could it not? Like how, how could it not? We it happens every single year in the NCAA tournament and those guys are less talented. <laughs> so like, it just, so- <laughs> it's just going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know why I found that call. And those guys are playing at the NCAA. Well, so okay, sorry, not less talented, but the uh, let me put it a different way. Not less talented. Well, they are they are less talented. Yeah. But there is a wider gap in talent also. Yes. Like the, the yes. NCAA tournament, once you get to that tournament, at the lower stages, there is a much, much wider gap in talent than there is in the NBA. Now, here's the one difference here, because I, I don't want to make sure I didn't misstate it. You're getting one wild card team from each conference, right? So the yes. three winners and then a wild card. So you're only getting eight total teams coming out of this, which means when I say the Brooklyn Nets are in line to be the wild card team, that is the lone wild card team. And the only potential where I see this gets a little bit wonky is if you're talking about, let's just label it, Cleveland goes through, Milwaukee goes through. And specifically with a team, say like Miami, though I think only think that Miami may be one of those teams that really plays these games and sends all their starters out there, but like kind of doesn't really. And after they make the trade for Dame, like I, there's a couple of teams I think are going to sneakily not really be a part of this tournament. But Miami playing Washington and playing the Hornets and building up such a big point differential. That's that's a potential caveat here where the Brooklyn Nets need to make sure that they only lose the game to Boston. If you have three wins, one loss, then I think you're in a pretty good spot because maybe Miami has two losses, right? Maybe even Philadelphia ends up having two losses. The win loss is probably their best path because I don't know. The question becomes, as we talked about the Nets before, when you look inside their bracket and we have Chicago, Orlando, Toronto, okay, the Nets have some issues offensively. Can they create a big enough margin of victory to make sure they cement themselves as the wild card? We'll go ahead and talk about that here a little bit deeper. And then also the perception of this tournament and why I think now in the first year is exactly when everyone should start getting excited about it and really committing themselves to making this a big deal for the NBA. Okay, so the Brooklyn Nets are lining up inside the in-season tournament. They are in the East C group, and we think, in theory, they have a really good chance to grab that wild card spot. Before I talk about why this should be a big deal right out of the gates, do you agree that there's at least this like little bit of a margin here when it comes to the Brooklyn Nets and what could happen in those other groups, a point differential category being a, a pretty big concern given what the Nets are offensively at least right now? Yeah, yeah, that's going to be they have to win all the other games um, to, to even that. That's like a, a it's a non-starter if they don't. Right. And yes. it'll like so that's and I will say the one dig on the tournament um, and I'll put it from a perspective of the Nets, let's say, is that you might know pretty quickly that you're kind of out of it. Like the, some of these playing games or some of, the, some of these group stage games could be like meaningless, maybe for both teams <laughs> getting sure. that, like when you get down, when you get toward the end of it and that would be kind of brutal. And so um, I'm not sure there's a sa- unless I missed it. I- I'm not sure there's a safeguard against that. Um, now look, they're just regular season games. So it's not like you should just lose them. Like the games still count on the one good thing for this is the, the games still count on your record. So right. like, so they, everyone should always be incentivized to play. Unlike some other group stage stuff in other places where it's like, Hey, we're going home anyway. This game will still be an L on your on your record if you don't. So there still is motivation there. But yes, I agree with you. There could be some problems. They could find themselves out of it quickly, right? Like well, it, 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 and I think that's a problem. And this is what I, and this is okay. So 
I think this is the concern. If you're if you're at a high level talking about the tournament and saying, yeah, the NBA is going to mandate to teams, you got to play in these things, you got to give your best get best foot forward. But using one of these, using the Western Conference, well, if you're Memphis and you lose the first game and you see that LA and Phoenix both win, right, and you lose two Phoenix in one in your first game, you're you're going to go, all right, maybe not, right? Or say Phoenix loses the first one, they go, oh. Am I going to really waste Kevin Durant and, you know, Booker? And, you know, am I going to go through that with these guys now or am I going to back it off a little bit? So there is at least well, a caveat well, well, around remember, that. Remember, though, the, again, though, the games still count, though. <laughs> like, I know. Well, so, and here's the, and this is, I want to get, to, that's what I want to get to is for some teams, the games still counting towards your record matter more than to other teams. And now in the West, I think it's critical, right? Like it's almost like it kind of doesn't matter that it is the in-season tournament or not. We need these wins and we need these wins against Memphis, against LA. If you're, if you're Phoenix, right, you need to make sure that you're in that pecking order because you could be talking about a really, really good team, not making the playoffs in the West in the East. However, I think like for a team like Milwaukee, right. For a team like Miami, who is so driven by what they're going to accomplish in the postseason. Even for Boston, who is a team that you could have the odds to win this tournament, odds to win the championship. If you lose one of those games, I think that taking your foot off the gas becomes a very viable option. That's where I wonder if the NBA is like, no, this needs to stay competitive. And then it gets me to this next thing. I was talking with the guys, on, a couple of guys on the network. I won't name them because I don't want to, you know, put, put them out there. Maybe their fan base is really excited for this tournament. But they basically said, yeah, five to 10 years from now, this becomes exciting because you've prescribed a value to it. But that's what everything is like the NBA championship didn't exist. It used to just be, you know, hoisting an end of season. There wasn't playoffs. There wasn't this other element to it. Then it gets introduced and it becomes a big deal. If you think that this can become something that matters to NBA teams and matters to fan bases, start making it matter now. Get excited about it now. NBA media, cover it now like it has significance, because if you treat it like something that is not a big deal, then it's going to take that much longer to gain that traction. And five years from now, young players that have year one coming into the league that are rookies now, they will associate it as being a big deal because every year of their career will include this thing. I hosted an in-season tournament. A lot of other leagues internationally do things like this, and they matter a great deal. So one thing, and I, I yes, and one, the, I think the reason there's like some negativity around this, and the, I, I think a lot of this is actually the NBA's fault, and they're trying to they're trying to walk back some of the things they've, whether they tried to or not, they've made the regular season not matter a lot over the last couple of years, and they're trying to get back to a place where it matters more, right? So they've already done. So I think there's like there's a trust factor lost among the fans that anything will move the needle because they haven't been able to move, move the needle forever on the, ever since like, I mean, it's been a long time, but like I, the, I always think back to like when the Spurs really started load managing. And then like, after that, it was just kind of game on with these guys just not <laughs> right. playing and whatever. Um, so I think in, in some ways that the NBA is, has this, it's a, they're solving a problem they created <laughs> with not <laughs> right. being able to figure this out. Right. Two, I think, I don't know if it's because of the name of it or like where the championship of it takes place or whatever. I think that people like almost equate it with the all-star game, which also does not matter, but it's just right. not that. So like the other thing the NBA did terrible is like this all-star game, which is totally meaningless and it's a total joke and it's just basically street ball and these guys don't care. And so people, when they hear the playing game and it's something new, I actually think they do this like instant transfer of like, Oh, I've, I've seen this before as the all-star game and that sucks, but that's not mm -hmm. what this is. Like, as we've said before, they're already safeguarded against the total tanking because the games do matter on your win-loss column, right? Yeah. So, like, already that, or at least, like, the, the group stage part already matters there. So that's already safeguarded against. The financial aspect we mentioned before is not immaterial, so that matters too. But I think that, like, some of the negativity or, like, what you said, the other guys in the network or fans out there that we saw drag it, it's because I think they have in their mind the other things in the NBA that don't mm -hmm. work, like the other things that, that already don't work, and they're like, it's just going to be another all-star game. It's not going to be that. <laughs> like, it's just not going to be that. Like, there's just no possible way it can be that. But I think that, like, the NBA has done itself so dirty over the years where they – actually, they, they just lost the trust of the fan base for regular season stuff. The, the trust is totally gone. It's gone. And, and they screwed it up. They screwed it up. Like, they let the players – they let go of the leash when it came to, like, just, just like, making it matter. And now they're trying to walk it back. And I think this is a, it's a functional step.
Yeah, and you had an, an in-season player rest, right? That's something that that was a give and take and a back and forth and a, and a point of contention between players and teams and the league and all that. So you're trying to also mitigate against that. And by the way, if getting players and teams to buy into this in-season tournament and be committed to it results in, hey, I played four or five games. They're just a part of the regular season, but I also earmarked four or five rest days. Fine. Like, I think that that trade-off is valuable to ensure that these yeah. don't become those rest days. Now, to, to zero in, to close out on the Brooklyn Nets specifically, um, I do find it interesting that Toronto has better odds, even though we think Boston's obviously going to win the group. Toronto is higher on FanDuel with a chance to win the group at plus 400. The Nets are plus 600 in that category. So uh, Boston is minus 145, just in case just in case you're wondering. But it's interesting for me for the Brooklyn Nets. And I think inside just the East alone, the Pacers fit this category. I think the Knicks maybe don't think that they do, but they're probably closer to fitting this category. The Raptors do, and Chicago does. Those are like four teams to me in the East that winning an in-season tournament or having a nice run in this tournament is, is significant. Now, for a veteran team like Chicago, it matters less because you, you really think you're trying to make a push for the last chance here before you break things down. But for Brooklyn, the Nets aren't winning the championship in the next two seasons. But as we said before, making the playoffs matters for them. Going on a run in this tournament could matter for them. If the Nets ended up in, in the semifinals in the Eastern Conference playing against Milwaukee and gave them a good battle and came up a little bit short, you know what that does? Sets up the back half of the season to say, oh, yeah, the Nets can compete with the highest teams in the East. They can find ways to win these games. And maybe inside of this, Jock Vaughn gives a little opportunity for a guy that hasn't been getting as much run leading up to it, right? Maybe you look for a little spark inside of this, and it launches one of these younger players into the second half of the season. So net specific, whether it's Cam Thomas, you know, really emerging. I've talked about the 50 games that Jalen Wilson has on his two-way contract. Like maybe something happens here where you catch a little bit of a spark for a guy that carries over. That's that is why I think this is a good tournament for the NBA overall and a great tournament for the Brooklyn Nets because you can just build a next stepping stone for them and what they're trying to accomplish in these next couple of years. Yeah, look, and it follows, it tracks along what we said about the Nets for this season is that are they the most talented team in the league? I mean, clearly not, but are they going to be trying all season long because of the status of which where they are in the draft, which is to say nowhere. And like, they just have a group of players that are just going to want to compete and they're just not going to tank. Like this does set up for them. Well, yeah. and I think that like, I think from, and we've talked about this a bunch and we can get, get out of here on this is that the, the regular season for the Nets, it could be a labor of love for sure, just because of where they stand overall on, on just the talent hierarchy. But I, I guarantee you what we're not going to see is them taking their foot off the gas this season because they just right. can't like, and they have a roster that's built around either, you know, guys who are still probably trying to prove themselves a lot, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, prove that the money's worth it for, prove the money's worth it for Johnson, prove that he's going to be a max player in, in McHale, right? Like later on in the deal, but Simmons, we talked about forever. You mentioned Claxton at the beginning of the thing um, with, you know, going into a contract here, all the guys that they bought like into sort of post hype dudes that they brought in to cover this, you know, cover the bench this season camp, like every guy in the team, like things really matter for these guys this year. And when you combine that with that, they don't have their own draft picks. The regular season is going to be, Every game, foot on the gas, and and the, and and this tournament just like lines up well for them. We can get out of here after. Do you have final thoughts yeah, on that? No, we'll no, go. just Mikhail Bridges and Cameron Johnson specifically. Maybe just Mikhail Bridges specifically. Like again, you're not going to the NBA Finals this year, but this is the next stepping stone in your career. Be, being a leader of a team, being one of the elite players in the NBA. Like I don't care. You can tell me that it's perceived to not be that meaningful. If Mikhail Bridges over these four, five, six specific games averages five more points than he does in every other game of the regular season and he hits game winning shots and he comes up clutch and he takes this team a little bit further than expected that matters like i'm sorry all of these things matter and by the way we've talked about this time and time again summer league was the great example right put a ball in front of nba players they do not associate it any other way then I have an opportunity to win a game. So like th the idea that there's going to be a reduced mentality around this, once you prescribe some heightened value, I think the players do buy into it. Even if at the highest level, some guys don't associate it. They want the chip, all that stuff. Once you're on the court and the NBA says, Kevin Durant, you have to play. Kevin Durant's going to want to go win. You think when the ball gets in his hands, shot clock winding down, he goes, ah, it's just an in-season tournament. No, he's going to want that bucket. So I think we're going to see some excitement from this. And hopefully... 
we get a little bit of rivalry developing out of these as well with some of these matchups where year over year, you just start to think about last in season tournament, the Nets knocked off Boston, right? You know, whatever it may look like. And that just prescribes another level of meaning. So I'm excited for it. I hope that people get behind it. And the quick Twitter poll says, yes, new, uh, sorry, I was just in New Jersey. My God, all the way back to New Jersey, Brooklyn Nets fans say, yeah, if the Nets were to win this tournament, it would be absolutely exciting. It'd be amazing. So there's no lack of excitement around this, at least from the Nets fan base. All right, we're going to get out of here. Make sure go subscribe to YouTube. Let us know what you think about the in-season tournament in the YouTube yeah. comments. So go subscribe. Let us know what your thoughts are on it. See if like any thing we had to go in here tracks. Um, if you just disagree with it, happy to hear that too. We'd love to just hear both sides of this because uh, I think I came around on this one. Um, I think Adam did too, but I'd be interested. What everyone else thought as well, make sure you subscribe to over on Locked on Nets and leave that comment. You don't have to be the best, but you should always do your best. Why, that's Frankie Sonnenberg. Oh, one of the all-time great poets. We're back again tomorrow, or excuse me, next week, talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball, 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 NBA and season tournament, basketball, 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 yeah.